Uh, this is the Dawn of Everything Book Circle meeting on Zoom uh, for March 30th, 2022. And let me turn off subtitles for me, but turn on transcript. Um, so welcome everybody. Thanks for thanks for attending. Um, uh, for the folks who are kind of new, um, we, we had our first meeting, a first meeting on Friday, uh, and you can find the, the YouTube and, and everything for it if you're interested. Um, we had about, I, we almost had about, I, I, I don't know, we had maybe a third of kind of like figuring out, you know, who's in the room, what we're doing, and maybe a third of talking about the book, which was uh, really uh, deep and interesting fast. And then maybe a third about kind of organizational stuff. Um, this meeting, I think, might be a little bit different. We might talk a little bit more about organizational stuff because uh, we've uh, we've got more done, kind of, um, and more to do. Uh, and I'm a little bit self-conscious, but I've kind of grabbed the reins of of this little uh, ship that we're on, and and I'm forcing us into a fair bit of process. Um, I think everybody's most most people at least are happy with that, and um, it the uh, the genesis of that is just making sure that we get done what we want to get done. I don't care too much what we get done, um, and I don't care who's grabbing the reins. <laughs> um, I do care that we're uh, affirmatively productive uh, in a in a way that that we've you know at least thought about and desired. So, um, does that make sense? Um, what I thought I would do is go over the structure that we've got so far, and um, and I'm super happy to either just go, yeah, that's great, or tear it apart, or whatever. So let's do that for at least half the call, kind of, um, and then maybe uh, as a reward, we can take the rest of the call and just talk about uh, the book or about topics related to the book. Um, and I'm going to end crisply at the hour uh, because I, I know Bill and I at least have another meeting to get to. Um, uh, another another part of this, I, I hope I, I hope to break some of our conventions. One of them is being uh, having uh, focus meetings uh, that are set up to do something and get it over with, and we're on to the rest of our day. Um, so uh, so let me share my screen. Actually, let me do a, a, a self-reflective or a reflective thing real quick. Uh, one of the things that I found was really interesting is I, po I was poking pretty deep into the Zoom uh, settings. And it turns out that you can enable different, different recordings. Um, the standard recording is the speaker and the screens uh, he or she is sharing. Um, uh, I've enabled something called the gallery recording. So, uh, I, I really like the gallery recording because you see everybody's reactions to what's going on, on the screen. And then the bad side, the bad thing of that is that the gallery recording doesn't include the screen share. So the screen share comes out as another separate recording and you could splice them together, but I haven't gotten that fancy or dedicated I, yet. I thought there was a combo view, no? There may be, I, I think there's not. Oh but... shoot, I'll go check. I thought there was a combo view. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm looking at this beautiful gallery view uh, that I've got set right now. Okay, this is an awesome recording, and then I'm going to switch to screen sharing for a chunk of it, and and maybe that'll come out in the, the recording or not. Or maybe I'll get excited and splice them together. It would be nice to do both, because I personally really enjoy watching people's reactions to things. And yeah. it feels I, much more like I'm in a, a circle of people talking about something rather than on the phone. I guess an easy fix, and, and one that I did at, at least for one call already, is I actually posted two YouTubes for one meeting. Um, one of them was the gallery view, and one of them was the speaker and the screen share view. And that then, and then you, well, then you have to kind of like pick through both of them if you want to see both of them, yeah. but anyway. Uh, so, hey, Wendy, welcome. We're just getting started. Um, so I was gonna share my screen, my web browser. Uh, so we've got a uh, we've got a website where uh, we're going to accumulate things like um, uh, meeting notes. 
this is the meeting notes from last meeting. And this is actually, and this reminds me, let me also do, here's a HackMD for today for folks who are HackMD-ish. Um, I think last meeting we were a little bit more HackMD-ish, but um, that's okay. I'll learn eventually. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, for that link, uh, feel free to go there. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to sign in. Uh, so kind of ignore the sign-in stuff. And you might see an edit button in the upper right uh, that you can click. And you might want to toggle one of these views um, after you click the edit button. Um, so anyway, uh, we've got a website. This is going to be kind of our, our group brain, our knowledge uh, repository. Um, hopefully, this will be reasonably easy for everybody to at least find stuff in. Um, uh, and we're not really expecting that people, at least I'm not really, I'm not really expecting that people will uh, add or edit stuff to this much, uh, except maybe uh, during meetings or something like that. Uh, when we make HackMD pages, they're easy to save off and, and turn, into, um, uh, turn into a page like this. So all of this stuff was typed during the meeting by at least several people. Um, and we did cool things like, we started talking about some of the big questions that we might address as, as the club unfolds. Um, we talked about uh, other Graeber books. We talked about other people who, who came up in the conversation kind of. Uh, as we go, these will, the, the uh, wiki gnomes maybe, uh, the, the wiki gardeners will turn these into links for another page on the site. And so this thing will continue to grow into kind of a rich uh, information resource, I think. Uh, right now, um, the, the wiki team is also a little bit embarrassed, maybe is a word to say that the website is a little clunky right now. Um, uh, it doesn't have like maybe a sidebar would be really cool with some navigation stuff and things like that. Uh, uh, this is kind of the escape valve right now. Uh, you can click all pages and see everything on it. And even though it's not super well organized here, at least you can get to any page you need to. Um, uh, as you might guess, this, uh, this website is implemented as a massive wiki. And so the wiki folks are going to be editing this um, in uh, their wiki way rather than as a website. <clears throat> so, um, so with that, oh, one, one last thing. There's a, a super cool tool called, called Hypothesis. Um, you might look at this website and go, dang, there's a misspelling, or I wish we could add something, or, um, you know, or I want to kind of chat about this uh, like I would in a Google Doc, but I, I don't see any place where I can turn on the chat. There's a third-party tool called Hypothesis, which lets you basically turn on uh, chat for this this website, this page. You could actually go to any page here and start uh, commenting it. So this is something that's kind of open to the public. Uh, it's not exclusive to us. I don't think most, you know, we won't find a lot of people who aren't in the group using this, but this is one way, not the only way, um, to tell the website team, hey, there's something interesting here or we need to change it or whatever. Um, I think the more normal way will be to go to um, I, and I think probably everybody here is, uh, my computer is, is being slow on DNS or something on new sites. Uh, let me grab something over here and come back and keep, well, I'll let this load. I, I was going to go to the chat channel, but, um, so with that, uh, we've got the wiki website, the Zoom meetings, a chat channel that most of you know about, maybe all of you. And then there's something called, um, I, I called it organizational article number one, uh, and it's in draft form. And some of you have seen this. Uh, let me scroll down to, these are people who've added their names. Um, I, I'm looking at this, I didn't say this in so many words, but I'm looking at this as the first article in, <laughs> and this sounds really overweight for a little book club thing, but the first article in, um, in a constitution. Um, so, you know, here's a group of people, uh, 
and we have uh, things that we want to accomplish and uh, and it's worth kind of setting down for all of us to kind of read and think and either agree with or disagree with, you know, are we an informal club? Yeah, probably so. <clears throat> Who can join? Um, uh, do we have social norms? And maybe we'll say what they are. Maybe they're kind of implicit. Uh, so this is like uh, how we work together, basically. Um, and uh, one of the big things that we accomplished in the last group, I brought up the, the concept of, are we working in the open or kind of like behind a curtain? Um, we decided open was okay. Um, and if we're open and publishing things, then we need to publish them with uh, an explanation, a license uh, for other people to understand how we're sharing them. Uh, we agreed uh, so far that uh, CC BY, Creative Commons Attribution, is, is perfectly fine. Uh, we did feel, though, that uh, we didn't want people like the rest of the world going, hey, there's this guy, Peter Kaminsky, and he must believe all the stuff that's been published on this website. And we're like, no, that's not what we want. So there's this disclaimer, um, this is not an academic thing. It's not even conclusive, so it's unfinished and informal. And uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that we came to consensus about any of the stuff that we write. And it doesn't, none of these things represent any particular person's viewpoint. Some, and some of us in the group might completely disagree with, you know, what, with what's written. So, so we kind of came up with this. Um, I, I worded it and wrote it down a little bit. And now that is at the top of the first, the homepage of the site. And it's also at the bottom of every page in the site. <clears throat> so um, if everyone's kind of good with that, we don't have to talk about it more. If folks aren't good with that, we should talk about it more um, soon. I'm fine um, with it. Thanks for the effort. Awesome, thanks, Judy. So, <clears throat> um, first, the first important thing is to kind of figure out what we want to be doing, and especially, also, what we don't want to be doing. Uh, so, I started some bullets here. Uh, this kind of what's what we want to do and what what we want to avoid doing uh, would be a great thing to talk about a little bit more in this call. Um, uh, yes. Check some, Keith, just because I was thinking about this, and I like having this type of call at some frequency, just to sort of do a pulse on how the group is doing, and maybe yep. separating that from the biweekly discussion, which might have substructure to it as well later. Um, yep. Because I think as the group engages, it's going to evolve, and that will affect our informal rules. But I, I do like the idea of having a bit of a covenant at the start, but very fluid, kind of in the form of an evolving community statement. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can capture that, Judy. So, um, uh, let me turn this back this way. Uh, so maybe biweekly content calls and also like... I don't know, quarterly, monthly, bi-monthly, not too often, but you know, maybe quarterly would be enough. Um, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Did, to, to be determined, I guess. <laughs> and, and what would you call those calls? Um, group framework. <laughs> um, I'm going to borrow a, a term from uh, another so another working team that some of us are on oh, that's, social that's dimensions. That's fine. Yeah, social dimensions is fine. But I want it personally, I'd like it to be a combination of social dimensions in terms of behavior, but also are we happy with how we're discussing all of this in terms of the framing of the, the process itself? And maybe those are social dimensions too. This just seems like such an important book that it yep. warrants being really thoughtfully digested. Yep. Um, thanks, Julia, it's super helpful. Uh, so let me go back to this kind of founding document again. And I don't wanna like drag us through it piece by piece. Um, 
but I also want to make sure that we've thought about uh, the chunks of it. So um, if you haven't read this, it might be good to kind of read through it, uh, add your name at the bottom. Um, oh, you can add my name. I didn't, I just didn't add my name yet. Good thing. Yep. I did do it. Uh, I did read it. And I thought and, it was uh, good. Judy is good? Yeah. Oh, Judy. Okay. Um, uh, is there is there any part of this that we need to discuss here while we're kind of in synchronous mode? Um, as, aside from goals and any goals, I think that we could dig into that a lot more. The, the thing that I, I would love to come out of this call with um, is a good understanding of what we're trying to do with this book club. And, and some of these, the, the first couple of these are really um, foundational stuff. You know, there's, a, there's an inclus inclusion statement and there's a, I, I think this one is really important that um, even though there's a, there's a fair amount of structure here, I think it's really important that you can either lean into as much of the structures you want or not, and it's fine, uh, including you don't even really have to read the book um, as long as you're not disruptive when the when folks are just dis, are discussing discussing the book. So, but a thing that I didn't these aren't um, these aren't like these are like meta goals almost, and then there's primary goals I think, which is um, I know I can I'm going to say something on behalf of Bill, and he can correct me uh, to the extent that it needs correction. But he's like Pete this thing should have, have a, uh, it should run its course. You know, we should get together for six months or however long, work through the book, work through, you know, generate a bunch of interesting stuff out of that. Um, uh, but we should make progress and we should get conclude, you know, this is meant to be, at least in Bill's mind and, and my mind too, this isn't meant to be a coffee clutch forever, you know, on, on the topics around Donna of everything. It really means to march through the book and the big questions and smaller questions generate stuff, including not necessarily conclusions, but, you know, lots of information. And, and I, 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 a thing that we're kind of poking towards is generating what questions do you ask about the book? What questions do you have about the topics of the book rather than you know, when you go off to, to, to talk to somebody about the book, um, you know, you would, maybe you would say, well, Greg Brissett, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, eh. uh, a yeah. more interesting thing is, um, here's the most interesting question that came up in, for me, as we were reading this book. Um, anyway, uh, so I, I would like to do some more of that kind of let, like, what are we really trying to accomplish here? And including, you know, maybe, maybe other people would think, no, we should get together and just have this thing run forever. That would be an interesting discussion. Uh, the other good thing to talk about is I, there's, there's a couple of things. Uh, Judy and I just kind of touched it here. We haven't really discussed the frequency of calls um, or uh, last call we talked about, maybe each call is kind of, bimodal and there's a, a chunk we're talking about this month's chapter or something and then there's another half of the call which is a little bit more freeform than that um, uh, talking about meta questions about some of the the topics that have come up um, uh, i i have a a strong desire and i think it's a reasonably shared desire that we set up agendas for each call um, and outputs that we want from the call uh, and drive the calls that way rather than just getting together and hoping that that things emerge. I love emergence, but um, this reminds me there's a big, uh, big, it's not the wrong word. Um, I wrote something, Zoom calls will have a clear agenda and expected outcomes prepared a week or so in advance. Didn't happen for this call for, for reasons. Uh, this is a special call. Uh, and you said it was that already. You said that we could go anyway. That this was a formative call. So you did actually state. The yeah, <laughs> it doesn't have a clear agenda. It didn't have a clear agenda. Well, okay. maybe that was clear enough. Um, uh, Bill said something interesting in, in place of outcomes. He's like, well, maybe we should have uh, a defined activity going into the call. Um, Bill and I haven't haven't uh, had a sidebar on this. Um, uh, I've been waiting for other people to kind of to ring in i my even even something like maybe we'll just have a conversation for a call 
for me, I would call, I, I would write that into the agenda. You know, we had 30 minutes of check-in and we had 30 minutes of just conversation. And that that's the expected output of the call. Um, I'm pretty jazzed about saying that our calls will have expected outcomes, even if the outcome is just, we conversed for 30 minutes or 60 minutes. Um, Judy? I just wonder, maybe we want to experiment with different types of dimensions. I'm fascinated by what I gravitate to in terms of the key, key question of each, almost each subsection of things. Um, it's almost like if I were highlighting in yellow, I'd, you know, I'd highlight three words or a five, five yep. word sentence or something. And then it's like, I'm gonna ponder on that, but not right now, because I wanna keep reading. Um, and everyone probably has a different approach to that, but I think that the discussion could be very rich if we thought about it in terms of the levels of penetration, because there's sort of like, oh, that's a new concept. I want to think about it. Well, how does that fit with this and this? That's a second level. You know, what are the implications of that would be a third level? And I think this group likely thinks, maybe not in those words, but in similar multidimensional ways about the content they digest. Um, that makes a lot of sense. And and I think you, you're kind of saying that the, the meetings might have different dimensions as well as exactly. what we talked about. Yeah. Um, Billy, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on, so just a little bit about where my perspective on, you know, what I, what I wrote in that uh, document comes from. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at when people get together and to meet together, right? I'm following a tradition of uh, socio-technical organizational behavior kind of practice from <laughs> like, I don't know, post-World War II, <laughs> um, <laughs> psychoanalytically based. But when you get to get, well, we get together, when I talk, rather than saying we're going to have outcomes, you might say the activity we are getting together today is, you know, we're going to, we have read chapter one. And we're going to like, you know, either present questions, have a conversation. There may be an outcome, you know, or there may just be a, a, a discussion. And we may say, well, one of the outcomes from when we get together and talk is we off, you know, we leave notes in the document and it's here, yep. you know, but I think um, it helps when I was, you know, more actively engaged in corporate work and stuff. It really helps in a meeting. And when you get together, it, the reason we're here today is, I did this at the National Academies once. We're here to share information. That's the work. We're not gonna answer questions. We're not gonna make decisions. We're just gonna share information. And we made sure everybody got a chance, you know, but it helps people stay in this hour. Here's what's happening. You know, and I could be like what Judy said, maybe something will come up for us as we read this book that we really want to, you know, and that may be, well, maybe we need a call that has this as its primary, I mean, the, the terminology from the old organizational stuff is primary task, but, you know, the reason there's this meeting. Um, Anyway, so I just wanted to clarify that a little. And, and also to say, I look at something like this as having a, a lifetime, a beginning, a body of work. And then we finished the book and we had this great conversation. You know, we may, we, we, we may talk about this book for the rest of our lives, but this kind of activity we did here and trying to, as a group of people, whatever, dig in, uncover, discover, recover, um, will be a, is, is its own uh, distinct uh, event or activity or something with a boundary. Um, real, real quick, how, does, how do people feel about that? Is, has this got an arc that ends or is it something that we want to get started and we, we love each other so much that we want to keep doing this until, until we all go to heaven or something like that? Yes and yes. <laughs> uh, Judy, when you say yes and yes, is it okay if we kind of have an arc to the book and then we yep. reconstitute later and say, you know, Absolutely. or we meet? Okay. Absolutely. I just, 
I'm fascinated by what other people find interesting in any given section. And that's part of the richness of the group discussion, so. Um, thanks. Uh, and thank you, Bill. Um, I, I think you and I should have a, a side conversation about um, primary task and expected outcomes. And maybe we're completely agreeing. Maybe we have different perspectives. And I'd like to talk through that more and bring it back to the group. Um, Klaus, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I, I talked about the lens through which to yes. uh, view the material last time. And I've been working on that, you know, trying to, to shape a lens uh, to, to observe this material. <clears throat> and the first thing that, that and, and I watched several videos of, of uh, interviews with the, uh, the, the co-author and author, and I posted one actually uh, with Democracy Now, where you know, they are active in the 2008 uh, boycott Wall Street uh, demonstration. So the, so, so the authors are very politically engaged and motivated. But what really strikes me just starting to read this book is the amazing brutality of the Europeans <clears throat> during this era. I traveled through Peru uh, a couple of years ago and I was just stunned at the, at the violence and brutality of the Spaniards in subjugating you know, the local tribes. Um, I mean, I lived in Asia, you know, and you see what the British did in Hong Kong, I mean, in, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the Chinese uh, theater. Uh, you look at India, you know, and, and uh, what happened there. And so <clears throat> I think the, the reflections in this book are similar to what Tolstoy was writing about, uh, pondering how you know, very, a handful of people could subjugate millions uh, into submission, and how is this even possible? There's this letter to a Hindu that Tolstoy wrote, which is, uh, I'm going to post it, which is just you know, phenomenal in summarizing the absurdity of, uh, of, of a few um, uh, oftentimes really unqualified people exerting power over so many. And so I see that, you know, just, just starting uh, to read here, um, the intelligence of the Indian tribes and uh, the, some of the uh, um, cultural uh, sophistications of the Indians penetrating into the European culture, you know, into the French intellectuals, but then wiping out these people in the brutality, uh, even in Canada, you know, uh, into, into the 20th century of mistreating the Indians so much. So there is, uh, so, so that's sort of the lens that I'm, that I'm starting to shape in reading this material. It's just... Yeah, that's uh, super helpful, Klaus. Um, and I put in the chat, um, uh, Klaus talked also a little bit in the previous call about uh, looking at the, reading the book through a lens. And I think that makes a lot of sense. And um, it kind of inspired me. And I guess I said this in the channel and then I hadn't thought about it too much, but um, I can imagine us. So for me, um, uh, as soon as we talk about a lens to read the book through, it's like, well, I think we're going to have a couple lenses. Um, uh, and then, you know, that, that makes me think, oh, it's going to be so cool uh, when the wiki gets there that we have, you know, a, a page of lenses and then a, a, another page for each lens. You know, there's a lens for, from capitalist point of view, there's a lens from, you know, a humanist point of view, there's a lens from the viewpoint of we we have a we have a a real crisis with climate and food and things like that and you know how are we going to apply the things that we can learn from this book to feed forward into the building of a, a new uh, you know new social um social order kind of um so you know i th i think i think it's i think it's super i i really appreciated klaus coming up and and saying that lens thing um, to be kind of explicit about the way that the way that we're reading the book, and then explicit about the different ways that we could read the book, and uh, so I kind of expect that to to mean that I, you know, 
three months from now or something when we've got two different viewpoints about a certain topic in the book it's like you know uh, you can imagine two people arguing no the book says this or the book says that and if you go okay well this is one lens and another lens and you guys aren't necessarily disagreeing you're just looking at it from a different viewpoint and being kind of meta aware of that i think is going to be super helpful so thanks about thanks for lenses klaus um hank um yeah uh, let me react to a couple of things that have been said. First of all, the, uh, the question about outcome versus activity. Uh, actually, I did put a comment in, in the, on the document which somehow didn't get saved because I do agree with uh, Bill on that and that each session might have either an output or an outcome uh, which can be differently defined, but they will all be activities. And, one of them might be a brainstorming activity and the other might be drafting a, an article activity and uh, could be many different things. So in that sense, I think we should be open to what emerges from the group that we want to do together. Uh, the other thing has to do with uh, uh, forever uh, and a day or uh, march through the book and uh, and disband. Well, on the on the the web page or was it the Manamost page? There were other books and other thinkers. Some of them criticized uh, uh, by Graeber and, and Wencrow, and a number of those thinkers have influenced my thinking and maybe our thinking as well. So. Uh, I could imagine that once we've dealt with this book and this set of ideas, there'll be another book, maybe not even published yet, which will have attracted everyone's attention and this group or a different group will form around that. Uh, and thirdly, yeah, I do really like the idea of lenses. And if the format for our discussions has a lens every session, I think that's a really good way of doing it. Uh, thanks, thanks, Hank. Um, with, with respect to life cycle and, and term kind of, um, uh, I, I guess I like both. I, I like Judy's answer, yes and yes. Um, I, I think we can be more productive or more, more focused, my, my personal belief, I guess. I think we can be more productive if we say, you know, we're going to read the book in six months or 12 months or whatever, nine months. Um, and I, I like the idea of kind of being uh, a, a word that I've, I've got from some of my facilitation history is, is ceremony, ceremonial, cer ceremonious. Um, uh, I like the idea of, you know, seeing over time, uh, we could make a little infographic, you know, these are the chapters that we've covered, the topics that we've covered, and you see it's like a thermometer filling up, right, or something, a fundraising thing filling up. We're getting, you know, we're halfway, we're getting to the end, and then kind of graduating and saying, okay, congratulations, folks, we've made it through this book, um, and then, you know, closing this chapter uh, affirmatively and saying, that, that's not to say that we couldn't take the same group and restart, rechart or something, you know, or maybe it's several groups or whatever. But I really like the idea of coming to a, a closure about something and then restarting, reforming, you know, regenerating. Jerry. Um, cool. I like that too. Um, one real quick thing, Pete. Um, yes. Right here, record gallery view with shared screen. <gasps> Wow. It's right above record active speaker gallery view and shared screen separately, <laughs> which I have checked off. I don't want that. That's like wait takes awesome. way too much editing. But this should fix your your, your issue you, I appreciate if, you, it. if you have it in the same place. That's that's my normal default setting because I love gallery view as you do. Yeah. Um, second thing is I feel like I have the lens that comes right after Klaus's lens because I agree completely with Klaus's lens. And then my interest really in a lot of these conversations is how do we apply that way of seeing, how do we make that way of seeing acceptable to somebody who completely objects to it right now? And you know, whether it's a CRT objector, a BLM Me Too cringer, a white nationalist, an Opus Dei member, I don't care, but, but how, how do we actually take the insights that we're working on here and make, help them shift the arc of history by pulling people away from 
like denialist points of view is just the way I'd see it. And maybe that's entirely the wrong way to speak it, but that's, that's sort of what I, I'm not here to, I love sitting and learning with you all and figuring this out. I want to apply this somehow in the world. And, and it seems like it might behoove us in the path of exploration to, ooh, sea lining. I didn't know, I don't think I know about sea lining. Um, it might behoove us in the exploration to invite some of those people into the conversation because I have a funny feeling that it's the path of discovery and like, like the holy crap. It's not the finished product that convinces them. It's the path of inquiry in, in, in community that might. And so that's, that's just the thesis. I don't know. I, I like the idea of short journeys. This is very much almost like an instance of what I was trying to do in Weaving the World and still want to do with Weaving the World because this is a, it's a book club with, with, uh, with benefits. <laughs> um, uh, and, and part of the, some of the benefits are geeky. Like it's a book club among geeks who can actually instrument stuff and do really interesting things. That's what I had to add. Thanks, Jerry. The, um, uh, I, I really like the idea to reach, reach out to people who are, are, are on the other side of the agreement fence or something like that. Um, I, I wanted to know we're, we're deep into, you know, I don't know, the last 10 years or so, we, we've gotten a lot of, um, uh, we've, we've grown up a lot. The, the culture of social sharing uh, now has people who are not only on the other side, but maybe they're on the other side and they're being offensive and they have offensive tactics for um, you know, not listening or trying to take you down or something like that. So as, as soon as you said objectors and cringers and you know, things like that, um, sea lioning is the art of um, grinding somebody down by continuing to ask very polite questions. You know, can you explain this? Can you explain that? You know, um, uh, so it's got an interesting history why it's called sea lining, sea lining too. But um, so as we engage other people, I, one of the one of the tricks that we all need to kind of learn in our culture, um, and it's still developing how to do this, but you have to not only try to help people and listen to people that you know aren't part of your your group um, but also some of those people may actually be actively thwarting you and and trying to confuse you and trying to um, just swamp you with disinformation um okay so we've got 19 minutes left um uh thanks everybody for kind of going through all of that uh do we have any uh, so as always, let me know if you have any problems with any of the technological stuff and and also don't feel like you have to participate in much of it. Um, I think the the core thing to make sure that we're all in is we can get a, attend Zoom meetings, which all of us are cool with, um, and then be able to follow the chat channel at least um, you know at least in kind of a micro level, macro level, um, because that's. We'll, we'll be half partly we'll be partly in the chat and partly in zoom uh, and then there's going to be other things uh, that kind of billow out of that one of the things that i, I forget who this was in in conversation with but um another thing that we've we've kind of gotten used to is it's so much fun to get all of us together that we really love the the, the doing of everything together and then you want to make sure that people don't feel left out or that everybody's, you know, so we, we have a, we have a convention kind of almost in our culture of we do the work together um, in, in groups like this, and then we don't do any work separately. Um, my guess is that this book club would be well served by having groups staying a lot um, aligned together, but having side conversations, um, you know, one or two people together talking about stuff. Um, I, I still want to talk more with Bill and, and maybe Hank about um, primary, uh, primary activity versus outcome, for instance, expected outcome. Um, that would be a great thing to, for us to sidebar on and, and kind of come back to the group and say, you know, we, we dug through that and this is what it is. And, and as well, you know, with any of the, that one is a meta topic. It, it's even going to be more interesting, I think, when we, when we have actual topic stuff to talk about. So I, I want to, I, I think, I think we need to make sure that we're, we're doing the work even when we're not all together. 
Um, that also reminds me um, that I, I wonder, my, my guess is that we're gonna have bi-weekly meetings or something like that. We still need to kind of talk about the, the frequency of them. Um, I, I kind of wonder if we're gonna have a time that alternates or maybe we're going to even have uh, two meetings every every other week and you kind of get to one or get to the other but you mostly don't get to both of them you're not expected to get to both of them we need to figure out how to kind of decentralize our working together and we've got enough infrastructural support to kind of put back together the decentralized pieces and i hope hope that works um, we need to as as a larger experiment, we need to get better at that. And so I think this book club is maybe going to be a good place to do that. Um, any questions about infrastructure, um, our constitution, um, anything else? And then we'll get on to the last 15 minutes of something else. Bill? Yeah, I just wanted to say something. I think, um, I don't know how this will work. But I think there's a possibility to use the Mattermost chat to have little side conversations. I know yeah. Klaus and I had a little quick turnaround on this one sentence that he typed in last week. He said, oh, this sentence really struck me. And by happenstance, I happened to I underlined it, you know, whatever, that same afternoon while I was reading the book. So I mentioned that to him. It ended up Bill in a reply thread, you know, mm -hmm. but there is a place to just like something came up on the on the Gmail list yesterday, and I put in some reflection I had from reading the book. But I would might we could just put these things there and just you know they would just accumulate, or we could just label them as a reflection. I've started a little wiki page of my own, which is reflections, and it has a date, you know, and a little pointer into the book, and then whatever I wanted to say about it in two or three sentences or something. So, I mean, we have some places to, I don't know, it's just a way to continue a conversation, yeah. I mean, a, a talking about the book and what we're getting out of reading it. Um, so the, the top line of that, I think, is that even in our technology stuff, we've got places to have kind of sidebar conversations and to encourage that. I, I agree with that. And then I also think that having a sidebar conversation outside of the technology, but at least bringing it back to either the Manimus channel or to one of the, the wiki folks or something like that is a good thing. Let me show you all real quick. Um, yes, Judy? I was just going to say, you're mentioning Mattermost. I really am liking Mattermost as a way to sort of develop threads and have the discussions occur someplace other than in my email. Yeah. Um, because it is properly threaded and so forth. So. <laughs> um, let me show you real quick. Uh, so I, I said this in the channel and it might not have been easy to see, but uh, there's, a, there's a, a new function, sorry. Um, there's a new function in this version of Mattermost that some of us are, have started to use and I haven't announced it. Uh, the, the CSC folks haven't announced it for general consumption yet, but it's available to use. Um, if you see, uh, actually maybe, so So here's me, here's Klaus um, just making a post. Um, and I replied to the post. In the old version of Mattermost, this would be a whole separate post by itself. Um, there's a new thing that will fold threads uh, into, uh, into a sidebar kind of thing. Um, so, uh, this is an optional feature to use this. It's called collapse reply threads, um, and it's optional, but it, it might kind of, the, the more we use that, um, both uh, the way that you do a reply is here instead of just typing, you know, something down here. Um, if the more we use the reply thing, um, and then uh, if people want to, the collapsed reply threads, uh, the, the better kind of bandwidth we'll get out of the, the chat channel. This is an, a little bit of an advanced feature, and so don't feel like you have to do it. But the way that you get to that is um, in settings, uh, display, and collapsed reply threads. Um, and there's a, it's still beta, it's pretty 
it's pretty close to being released. So don't worry too much about that stuff. Um, and let me know if you need want help with that, need help with that. Um, not that we'll get to it today, but I think Kevin actually said some interesting things here too. Uh, so I hope this isn't just, you know, uh, cargo culting, indigenous culture, uh, retro cargo culting or something. Um, so he said some interesting things here that we should read and think about uh, offline. Okay, so now 11 minutes. Um, uh, we could each go around for one minute and talk, uh, or, uh, or we could cover an important thing in the book that, that uh, comes up, folks. What should we do? Maybe go around the room. It would be nice to at least hear everybody. Um, maybe go around and have a closing thoughts or opening thoughts, even better, um, from, from each person. Um, I'll, I'll run us in order and uh, according to the order on my screen. Barry, you're up first. Um, me? Yes. Okay. Um, um, I'll pass. I think I talked enough a little earlier. I'll give the time to whoever Thanks. else would like it. Thanks, Jerry. Um, I'll pass as well. Trevor? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the shape. It's evolving. Um, so, yeah, I'm just happy with how it's unfolding and so cool. cool. Uh, Klaus? Yeah, I think I already stated my my uh, major thrust, but uh, I, I think it, it, there, there is, um, because of technology and communication and information, I always considered four-dimensional thinking involving time, right? Uh, because when you when you open up to the information, you can basically relive the past because the, it's so well described. And and when you do that, then what you're seeing today takes on a completely different view. You know, when you when you think in in terms of. Uh, uh, of thousands of years of evolution, and which I thought was so fascinating to read Yuval Harari, you know, in the way he summarized the uh, evolutionary path of our species. So um, here, this is this book is yet another layer of that. It takes us one step deeper into into uh, understanding ourselves, and um, yeah. So this is sort of a super. Uh, meta level uh, perspective when you get into the dimension of time to understand uh, uh, our, our current predicament. And that's what I find uh, truly fascinating. And you bring those voices together. It's like this, this letter I posted from Tolstoy. It's a, it's a highly summarized version of uh, his understanding of the power dimension of, of our species and the absurdity that we subjugate ourselves to uh, leadership that is often completely incompetent or you know, what we see right now you know, with, with uh, uh, the Ukrainian crisis where one guy gets to make decisions that impact the entire planet. And, and so how do you get out of that? You know, how do you walk through this? And uh, understanding that uh, um, we are embedded in these power dimensions and, and just uh, can't figure out how to get out of it and how to move on to where we really need to move forward to uh, uh, as an existential issue. Thanks, Klaus. Hank? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm nearly finished with the book. I think I only have 70 pages uh, to go. Uh, and I've been trying to talk with a number of people about it who had never heard of the book before. And I've always found it extremely difficult to, to get to the meta level of saying what I really like in it. And uh, I'll say a few things and it'll seem to uh, uh, discount other thinkers that have influenced me a lot like Harari or, or uh, Jared Diamond. And then I'm in a quandary 
about what do I really think about what I've read. And, and I'm really interested in getting into this conversation with, with the people here and the others who are going to be here because it's dense stuff. And aside from all the references and the footnotes, which I've mostly passed over, uh, every chapter gives enough to think about for a week or two. So uh, really looking forward to it. Awesome. Thanks, Hank. Jack? Um, so I have to confess, I'm still barely into the book because I got dragged away in a big software development thing that's that sort of exploded in my face. But I have to say, these are very important conversations, and it's 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 really a pleasure being here and at least listening. If I can't participate, thanks, Jack. Judy. Uh Pretty much said what I thought before. I'm very appreciative of this group of people getting together to attempt to understand and digest and share thoughts about what I think is a very powerful work. Thanks, Judy. Wendy? I just got the book yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, but I'm so drawn to the time. We've referenced it in so many different meetings. I've been really excited to read it. So this gives me an excuse and an accountability to dive in. And I'm thrilled to be a part of a community of people where we can talk about it more deeply. I really liked all the framing and the infrastructure, Pete, today. It's so, it's even, it, it provides even more inspiration and motivation because I feel like then the conversations might actually apply to something, which I think is what Jerry was, was referring to. And then I really appreciate your, your addition, Klaus, about the lenses and, and what's a, what came up for me was maybe, we, maybe it would be valuable to um, craft some of the lenses through a question so that it's, um, we stay in that space of inquiry and recognition that we're never fully gonna ever answer the question, right? Or, or that we don't even fully um, even if we're coming from our own perspective and that's a lens or coming from my own gender and that's a lens or coming from my own history and that's a lens that there's a question around that, that, that I also appreciate that I can't possibly represent all women or all, right. So it's just, I think maybe putting out some questions, some leading questions that we want to answer would be a nice way to approach the material. Just a thought. Thanks, Wendy. Um, Bill? Yeah, so I don't really, um, I think I've said everything. I think personally, I'm feeling very simpatico with Klaus, but uh, it's just because of what he's saying and just trying to pay attention. Um, and what Wendy just said about questions, it reminded me there's a quote that's uh, often attributed to uh, Picasso, I think, who was once asked about computers and said, computers are useless, they only give answers. <laughs> um, but just to close, so Klaus and I are sort of reading the same section. So on page, oh, page 61, where he's finishing this one section, also about how the Europeans responded to this critique from Americans. I mean, they, you know, they used the word Americans for, you know, when the French came over here, they met Americans, you know. Um, <laughs> and so there was this tremendous critique, which then stimulated a huge pushback. But the last sentence at the end here says, <laughs> and it said, you know, that the, the people, the Americans really were into how can we build, organize their lives to minimize the possibility of one human being become subordinated to the will of another. People have autonomy and freedom, even if they didn't have a lot of wealth, you know? Some like the Jesuits condemned the principle of freedom outright. So this came up for me this week. It's like, it's just how deep being raised as just in the United States, how deep this idea is in almost everything we think, the way we create laws, the way we organize our businesses, the way we just think about, you know, we're gonna take a walk in the neighborhood or what it is to have a neighborhood. So I find this book to be extremely uh, for me, powerful and just keeping me asking questions about why do I always, you know, think things like this is the way things are.
Thanks, Bill. And maybe that's a good place to close. Thanks, everybody. Uh, stay in touch on the Mattermost. We'll see you. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Wait. Thank uh, you. Start.